Have you seen videos like this? Here's a tax strategy that people don't know about. It's called the Augusta Rule. One of the easiest tax strategies that you can use if you're a small business owner called the Augusta Rule. It's called the Augusta Tax Loophole and anybody could use it. It's called the Augusta Rule. I think one of the most overlooked aspects of the Internal Revenue Code that the elite use for their benefit is the Augusta Rule. So I get tagged in these videos all the time. And the question is, what the heck are they talking about? And is this any bit legit? Because like with most things, this sounds way too good to be true. But unlike those things, this is actually legit. This is actually a true thing that you can use in your business. The Augusta rule is essentially this. The Internal Revenue Code, Section 280A, says that if you rent out your home for 14 days or less during the tax year, you don't need to report that rental income. I do not need to take that rental income I received, put it on Schedule E, and pay taxes on it. It's tax-free. Right? As long as I rent out my home for 14 days or less during the tax year. And so what these guys are talking about here is, okay, well, if I'm able to do that with someone else paying me, what if that someone else was my business? What if I had my business pay me to use my home during the year for 14 days or less? Then I could have a deduction on my business, rental expense on my business, and then receive the money personally, but not have to count that income. That's a pretty sweet deal. And guess what? This is held up in court cases. And, and most recently, there was even a court case where at the end of the day, they were disallowing a lot of the expense they took for this Augusta rule. But in between the lines, it says, hey, Augusta rule's totally legit. You can definitely take this. And we're not denying that. We're just denying your use of it. But that said, like with everything else, if you use something incorrectly and you abuse it, it can become illegitimate. So let's go through some of the ways that one actually might be able to utilize the Augusta rule in their business in ways that wouldn't be great for trying to take this expense in your business. So the first thing is this, how do you use this in your business? Here are the three main ones I think most people are gonna take. The first one is this, uh, partnership meetings. And I, I don't mean partnership meetings with you and your spouse because that's probably not gonna fly in the case of an audit because you, you don't need to rent your home out to talk with your spouse. They live in your home with you. So you would really be best served if you had partners who lived outside of your home. They could be a family member, but someone who lives separately from you. Because that means you're using your home in lieu of a meeting space, right? That's the main idea. I'm utilizing my home instead of another space. The second one would be, what if I'm having an event? What if I'm having a uh, holiday party or something for my employees or I'm having uh, vendors or clients or contractors or other partners or whatever it might be into my house for some kind of event? Well, ins again, instead of me renting out a venue, I'm gonna rent out my home. And so I'm gonna look at reasonable rates in my area to rent out a venue and say, I'm gonna pay myself instead to use my home. The third thing and the easiest and most defensible thing, and the easiest to find a fair rental rate would be if someone is coming from out of town and they're using your house to stay overnight, they're using it for lodging. Well, obviously I can find hotel rates in my area and them staying in my home in lieu of going to a hotel is very reasonable to be reimbursed for that as the business owner. Here are the ways that I find to be bad. And I would recommend avoiding because it doesn't show true business intent and it doesn't show an ordinary necessary business expense. The first way is this, and it's the most common one, is people say, okay, what is the daily cost for your home to rent it out for a meeting space or a venue space or whatever it might be? They find the highest thing they could possibly find. They say, okay, great. It's going to be $500 a day times 14 days. That's going to be $7,000 for the year. All right, take $7,000 divided by 12 and pay yourself that every month with a recurring transaction. Now. Why would you do that? I don't do that with any other venue space that I rent anywhere. I don't, I don't pay for 14 days spread out evenly over 12 months. It doesn't really make any sense. What I would do in a reasonable business transaction, especially for venue space, is I would pay for the days that I used it shortly after the days I used it, right? Or maybe a day before I used it. What I mean by that is if I'm going to rent out my space for an event, for a holiday party or something like that, I should create an invoice, send it to my LLC, have the LLC either write up a minute or some kind of information about the event that happened, put it on its calendar, and then pay myself. And now I showed true business purpose, and I paid for it in a reasonable business-like manner. 
the day after or a few days after the event actually happened. Because that's how you would rent out a space. You would not prorate that over 12 months over the year. That just doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't make any sense if you're trying to defend the expense. So in my opinion, make it the most like a business expense. Pay for it as you're actually using it. Again, it's only 14 days or less during the year. It's not that cumbersome to do. The second thing is this. It is not you just paying for a random 14 days of the year to use your home office. That is absolutely not what this is. Because guess what? You're using your home office for every day of the year. You cannot pick 14 of those days to pay yourself for. And here's the easiest example of why that would be stupid. Let's say I go to my neighbor and I say, hey, Jeb, I'm going to rent out an office space in your home. Just one room, going to rent it out for 14 days during the year. And hey, guess what? Because it's only 14 days during the year, you don't have to count the income. And I'm going to pay you a thousand bucks a day. Now, he'd be stupid not to take that. He'd be like, okay, sure. You can come into my house for 14 days of the year, pay me 14 grand to use an office space. Weird, but I'll take the free 14 grand. Who would really deny that? I'm a nice guy. He, he, he wouldn't deny that. But if I then said, no, 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 I'm not just going to use it 14 days. I'm actually going to use it five days a week, but I'm just going to pay you for 14 days a year. He would say, get off my lawn, you dumb, dumb person, you. Obviously, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I rent it for 14 days, but use it for every day? That's not how renting things works. So obviously, that's not what you would utilize this deduction for. Only use it for things that are going to happen on a very infrequent number of times, i.e. 14 days or less during the year. So with all that said, is this a legitimate deduction? Yes, absolutely. Should you use it in your business? Yes, absolutely, especially if you have the means to do so. But should you first understand it before you try and use it in your business? Yes, absolutely. That's the whole point of my account. It's not to poo-poo on all these videos and say all these people are a bunch of shysters and they should pay more taxes. Heck no, I want everyone to pay less taxes. But knowledge is power. Understanding how things works allows you to use things correctly. And if you use them correctly, you don't say anymore, I hope I don't get audited. You say, who cares if I get audited because I've done everything correctly and I've documented it along the way. Be smart. Don't just be someone who rolls the dice and hopes that the IRS doesn't audit them. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and hit that notification bell. And be sure to follow me on TikTok or Instagram where I post other videos and where you can also tag me in videos that you see across the internet that are maybe a little bit suspect. Again, thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.